Minecraft Java Edition 1.21.2 is the Bundles of Bravery drop, finally bringing bundles fully into the game but also adding Ender Pearls as chunk loaders along with many other quality of life features and fixes as well as adding no less than 3 new experiments to the game. My name is Sly Slime and this is the guide to all the changes. Let's start with bundles. After being added in experimental form way back in 2020, they are now finally a full part of the game. Crafted from a piece of leather and a string, a bundle is a new type of container meant to declutter the inventory by providing a way to stack multiple different items into one inventory slot. Add any item to the bundle by left-clicking the bundle while holding the item in the cursor, or left-clicking the item while holding the bundle in the cursor. You can take items back out of the bundle by right-clicking on an empty slot while holding the bundle, or by right-clicking the bundle while not holding an item. This takes the top item type out. That is, all the items of the type that was most recently added into the bundle. Hovering over the bundle in the inventory opens a preview of the first rows of items in the bundle. Items are added to the bundles in rows of 4, which means that you'll see at most 12 items and that bundles with more than 8 items show at least 8. While this view is open, you can use the scroll wheel to select any of the visible items, which shows a highlight over the selected item and shows its description above the inventory preview. The item also peeks out of the bundle icon. Right-clicking to take an item out while an item is selected like this takes that item out of the bundle instead of the top item. Another way to empty the bundle is to use it from the hotbar in the world. This drops all the items of the top item type out of the bundle onto the ground in front of you in a single stack. The total capacity of a bundle is one stack of items. Each item you put in takes as much space as that item would proportionally take of a stack. So you can have one axe, 16 enderpearls or 64 buttons, or a mix of 15 enderpearls and 4 buttons. You can also put a bundle in a bundle. But then, the inner bundle takes up a bit of extra space, using up as much space as a 16 stacking item plus whatever content it contains. Just like shulker boxes, bundles can be dyed by crafting the bundle with a dye item. This works even if you had previously dyed that bundle if you use a different dye. And just like with shulkers, the dye serves no purpose other than as a convenient way to tell your bundles apart. Any thrown ender pearl now loads chunks around it in a 3x3 chunk area, just like an entity going through a portal. This is accompanied by a change to how ender pearls relate to players. They now belong to the player just like a mount would, which means that ender pearls will now vanish from the world when a player that threw them logs out and reappear when that player loads back in. This then also reloads the chunks around them. To be specific, an ender pearl creates a new ticket for chunk loading every time it moves into a new chunk, and also periodically every 10 seconds. In portal news, the portal cooldown of projectiles and vehicles has changed. Minecarts and boats now need to leave the portal for half a second to be able to travel again. Projectiles now only need to leave the portal for two ticks, that is one tenth of a second. Riding a minecart through a portal now preserves your facing relative to the minecart, when you leave the end for the first time, doing so while riding an entity no longer skips the credits of the game, and after seeing the credits, your attributes are no longer reset. Leaving the end when your spawn point is set to a respawn anchor no longer uses up charges from that respawn anchor. In crafting news, the space and enter keys can now be used to repeat a recipe from the recipe book in any crafting screen with a recipe book. This only works after clicking a recipe in the book, not while placing items in manually in a crafting grid, and will keep repeating the recipe until you are out of one or more ingredients. Like when clicking a recipe, you can also hold Ctrl to craft a full stack. And you can now use Ctrl and Q to drop a full stack of items from the result slot of a crafting table. Suspicious stew recipes and shulker box dyeing recipes now show up in the recipe book, and you can no longer dye a dyed shulker box to the same color it already is. Let's talk about blocks and items. The rarity system has been updated, which means the colors of various item names have been changed. The rarity of an item indicates how easy the item is to get in terms of how rare it is in loot tables, how far you might have to travel to find it, the challenge level in obtaining it, and the total amount of such blocks or items in the world. In this new system, items crafted from other items are now at least as rare as their ingredient. Smithing templates now have a new way to display their name, showing the smithing template in the hover text instead of the name. Some news to banner patterns as well. Ominous banners no longer lose their rarity when renamed using an anvil. 
Each banner pattern now includes their pattern type in the name, and the patterns now have unique icons. There are two new banner patterns brought over to match Bedrock Edition. Field Masoned, crafted from paper and bricks, which gives the bricks pattern, and the Borger Indented pattern, crafted from paper and vines, which gives the curved pattern. Those two patterns now require that you have the pattern item to be able to use them in a loom. Speaking of looms, the pattern slot in the loom now also has a new look. Holding a breeze rod now looks just like holding a blaze rod. And redstone torches now have a new look. This also applies to the torch components on other blocks, such as repeaters and comparators. Beehive and nest items now show as full of honey properly when held and in the inventory. And they now also show lore information about what bees are inside. Redstone lamps and wheat blocks now have the right colors on maps. Brown for redstone lamps regardless of if they're on or off, and yellow for wheat. Other gameplay fixes. An old and famous bug causing boats to break when they fell from certain exact heights has been fixed. Being smashed to death by a mace now has a unique death message. Player name was smashed by attacker, or player name was smashed by attacker with weapon. A bug letting players duplicate string from tripwires has been fixed. Blocks without collision that react to entities now react properly even to entities moving very fast. One example is tripwires that will now detect projectiles flying through them very fast. Slime blocks have new behavior when falling onto them. Holding down the jump button no longer cancels the bounce, and sneaking when landing on a slime block now cancels the bounce but no longer makes you take damage. Raids have been fixed, so raids starting 112 blocks above the ground no longer immediately spawn all the waves and then ending the raid with a player win. Raiders must now find a place to spawn no more than 96 blocks vertically above or below the village center for a raid to be able to start. It is now much less likely for raiders to not find a valid place to spawn when raiding. And illagers in a raid can no longer get stuck trying to pick up a leader banner they can't reach. Some explorer maps would generate without showing the icon to the target of the map, which is fixed in this version. Equipping a carved pumpkin now hides your player marker from maps held by other players. In mob news, wolves can now also be fed all types of fish, including cooked variations, as well as rabbit stew, like on Bedrock Edition. Plenty of tweaks and fixes to bees in this version. Bees now wander around randomly for less time after leaving their nest or hive, and bees that have a home hive or nest will stay closer to it to lower the chance that they end up lost. And blowing up a hive now makes bees get angry at the closest player. Squid and glow squid collision and movement has been fixed to stop them flying out through air or through collisions and rubber banding. And they now get pushed properly by bubble columns. There are now also baby versions of squids, glow squids and dolphins. These only spawn naturally, you still cannot breed these mobs. When a dolphin spawns, it has a 10% chance of spawning as a baby. When a squid or glow squid spawns, they now also have a 5% chance of spawning as a baby. There are also now small and large variants of the salmon, in addition to their regular sized one. Bats can now spawn at any height, not just below sea level, as long as it is dark enough and on top of a base stone type block. When a sub-variant of zombies like husks drowned or zombified piglin tries to spawn a reinforcement, it would spawn a regular zombie. They will now instead spawn reinforcements of the same type as themselves. Breezes now jump higher if they have jump boost and can no longer jump off of honey blocks. And blazes now have an appropriate color to the bottom of their rods. In structure news, trial chambers have been updated in this version. There are new variations to the hallways, which includes new encounters which are short challenges leading to the larger chambers. The empty chests in the chambers have been replaced by barrels with hoppers pointed into them, highlighting their purpose as places to drop off and sort loot. The beds in the intersections are now of random colors. And the intersection chests have been fixed to properly use a loot table, rather than always having exactly the same loot. In Realms news, the normal create world screen is now used when you create a world on a realm, which means you can do things like change all the generation settings, add data packs and change game rules. This also means you can now enable hardcore mode on a realm. The game mode of the last active world on a realm will now show up on the main realm's screen. 
The slot highlight in the user interface has been updated to have better item visibility. Previously, the highlight was entirely in front of the item in the slot. Now it will be mostly behind the item on the slot surface and only a slight bit in front. The air bubbles that pop up when underwater now have an empty state for each bubble and a new wobble when you are drowning. Each bubble popping now also has a new pop sound, which starts to become more high-pitched as you get closer to drowning. There's a new accessibility option called High Contrast Block Outlines that makes the targeted block's outline more visible, especially for dark blocks. And there's a new language, High Norwegian. There are several new options for reducing CPU and GPU usage in this version. The first one is a video option called Reduce FPS When, which has two options. The default is AFK. This will make your game move progressively to a lower FPS cap when the game is not receiving any input, first going to 30 FPS maximum after 1 minute, and then going to 10 FPS maximum after a total of 10 minutes idle. The other option is minimized, which limits the FPS of the game to 10 when it is minimized. The other new option is a server option called pause when empty seconds. This defaults to 60 and if set to a positive number will cause the server to pause its simulation when no player has been online for that long. The spawn animals and spawn NPCs server.property settings have been removed. This version comes with a number of optimizations reducing the CPU load of a server when it is waiting to begin processing the next tick, as well as other optimizations for saves, explosions and having a large amount of item frames. Other optimizations have also been made to improve the general tick rate performance of servers when using high render distances, and the tick rate impact of loading and generating chunks has been reduced. This version also comes with rendering performance optimizations, especially for when using a high render distance setting and when turning the camera. A new experiment has been added called Winter Drop, which contains features for the upcoming minor update after the bundles of Bravery Drop. Like other experiments, this toggle must be enabled when creating a world, and existing worlds cannot be changed to turn new experiments on. It contains the new biome The Pale Garden, which is a biome variation of the Dark Forest biome, with pale oak trees instead of dark oak trees. Pale moss blocks and carpet generates on the ground, and hanging pale moss generates hanging from the foliage of the pale oaks. The grass in the Pale Garden has a desaturated greyish look, the sky is a smoky grey and the water is a pale light blue. Any tinted leaves placed in the biome also get a desaturated grey look. This biome is now also a requirement for the Adventuring Time advancement. There are no animal mobs that spawn naturally in the Pale Garden. Pale moss can be bone mealed just like regular moss and then spawns a pale moss patch covered with pale moss carpets, grass and tall grass. When you place down a pale moss carpet, it will grow up the blocks next to it on any vertical surfaces, at least up the sides of any adjacent blocks, but also randomly up to two blocks tall. Bone mealing the carpet makes it grow two blocks up all adjacent blocks. Breaking these tendrils will break all sides at once, and removing the moss carpet will also break them. Removing the block they are attached to also makes them vanish. Pale moss carpet can also be crafted like regular moss carpet from two pale moss blocks. The pale hanging moss cannot be crafted and does not grow on its own. However, it will grow down one block if there is space when bone mealed anywhere in the column. Pale hanging moss only drops when cut with shears or a silk touch tool. The correct tool for mining the pale moss blocks and pale moss carpet is the hoe just like for regular moss. And, just like regular moss carpet, pale moss carpet is also more quickly broken with a sword. Pale oak leaves can be sheared or silk touched like other leaves. When picked up and placed in a different biome, they retain their grey look and are unaffected by the biome tint. When broken otherwise, they have a chance to drop a pale oak sapling starting at 5% and increasing with fortune. If you don't want to plant it for decoration in a flower pot, you can also plant the sapling for new pale oak trees. This has to be done in a 2x2 area, just like for dark oak saplings. All these organic blocks can be composted, with the pale oak leaves and saplings, as well as the moss carpet and hanging moss giving the lowest possible chance to add a layer at 30%, 
and a pale moss block giving a 65% chance like a regular moss block. Pale oak logs can be crafted into the entire wood set of pale oak, including wood, planks, stairs, slabs, fences and fence gates, doors and trapdoors, buttons and pressure plates, signs and hanging signs, and boats with a chest boat variant. The logs and wood can also be stripped using an axe. The pale oak trees also have another unique feature, the creaking heart block. It can be found within some pale oak trees hidden by pale oak logs on all sides and cause a creaking mob to be spawned if the player is nearby at night. This happens based on the day-night cycle, not based on the light level like other mobs. And when it turns to day, the creaking will despawn. The creaking will not move as long as a player is looking at it, but it will move if you turn away. Wearing a pumpkin on your head removes this effect. The creaking then always behaves as if you were not looking. It'll follow and attack players up to 32 blocks away from its creaking heart block. Once that far away, it'll stop. Taking a hit from the creaking is relatively light, up to a couple of hearts of damage on hard mode without any armor. You can attack it, but it is invulnerable. Instead of taking damage, a particle trail appears when it is hit, showing the way to the source creaking heart block. And another particle trail appears from the creaking heart block, moving towards the creaking. The creaking despawns when the creaking heart block it is connected to is mined, with no loot or experience dropped from the mob. This does count as killing the mob and now grants the Monster Hunter advancement, and is now also required for the Monsters Hunted advancement. Mining the block is most efficiently done with an axe, and it only drops when using a silk touch tool. The creaking can only spawn when the creaking heart is placed between two correctly aligned pale oak logs. The creaking heart lights up orange when it is correctly placed, and is otherwise a dull brown. Creaking hearts can also be used with comparators. They output a signal strength based on how far away the connected creaking is. The value is zero when there's no creaking, or the creaking is near 32 blocks away, and then increases linearly to 15 when the creaking is right next to the creaking heart. Some special things about the creaking. Creaking cannot enter boats, and once spawned from the creaking heart cannot enter portals either. You also cannot name them with a name tag. If you unload the chunk in any way, including by relogging, any creaking spawned from creaking hearts will despawn. There is a creaking spawn egg, which spawns an untethered variant that can go through portals and is not connected to any creaking heart block. The variant that is summoned from the creaking heart block cannot be made using spawn eggs and also cannot be summoned by commands. Creaking from spawn eggs persist through day and night, don't go away when the chunk is reloaded and do take damage from regular attack. They have a single point of health, which is half a heart. All types of illagers, even ravagers, are afraid of creaking and will try to avoid them, even though creaking only attack players. The ambient sound for this new biome use a different system than other places. Instead of having biome ambient sounds, the sounds are generated from the blocks in the biome. There's a new experiment containing various redstone related changes called redstone experiments. There's currently no target release for these changes, they're a place to try out things to get feedback. So what are the changes? First of all, redstone wire has been changed to vastly improve its performance. Redstone wire now only triggers block updates on blocks that may receive power from the wire, and before a wire causes block updates, the new signal strength of the entire line is updated. The update order of redstone wire has changed with the goal to make wire behave the same regardless of where it is and how it's oriented in the world. When a line of wire turns on, the wires closer to the source of power will cause block updates first. When it turns off, the blocks closer to the source that turned off will update first. When distances are the same, the left side along the wire updates first. The order in which blocks around the wire get updates is now dependent on the direction power travels along that line. The order is currently back, front, left, right, down, up. In situations where power comes from above or below and there's no directionality to be found, the update order is selected at random. The last new experiment in this version is called Minecart Improvement. This is an experiment testing changes to minecarts with the goal of making vehicle travel, like with minecarts, a viable option for players compared to other late game options, like Elytra. 
These changes make minecarts a smoother, more consistent and predictable experience, but also break some mechanisms that rely on some of the old minecart quirks, notably some storage tech mechanisms. Just like with the redstone changes, this experiment has no given target release, but serves as a place to experiment and gather feedback. So let's get into the specifics. Minecarts now articulate their movement better when moving fast, sticking to the rail even at faster speeds and smoothly turning around corners rather than snapping back and forth. There's a new accessibility option that is only available when the experiment is active, that lets players turn with the turning of a minecart, as if you are actually riding the thing. This defaults to being off and can only be changed in worlds with the minecart improvements experiment turned on. Another new setting is a new game rule, minecart max speed. This changes the maximum speed of minecarts from the default of 8 blocks per second, which matches the previous max speed of minecarts, up to a maximum of 1000 blocks per second. Setting the game rule doesn't mean that you can actually get a minecart up to that speed since factors like air resistance still affects carts, but minecarts can at least get very fast. That game rule also only exists in worlds with the minecart improvements experiment turned on. Another change is that minecarts are now much better at doing jumps, keeping their vertical momentum when the track ends in a slope and articulating their tilt while in the air. Their movement sound also stops playing while they are in the air. With the experiment on, you can no longer place minecarts inside each other. However, dispensers are still allowed to. It is now instead easier to place minecarts next to each other on a track. And moving minecarts are now better at consistently picking up mobs. Some mechanisms that rely on precise minecart timing may not work with this experiment, since the new simulation may have a slight changes in speed, movement distance, friction, and so on. And that's not all. This version also updates the data pack version to 57 and the resource pack version to 42, adding new commands and data driving functionality, among many other things. If you're also interested in that, keep your eyes on the channel for a separate video. But that's it for the bundles of bravery drop, and there's a bundle of buttons for you to drop likes on below. Thank you for watching. My name is Sliced Lime, and I'll see you next time.